Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Andy Park. Welcome back to this channel. So, whether you need to take your meetings while you're on the road, or want the freedom to move about during a meeting, the mobile version of Teams offers a pretty good experience. And in today's video, I'll share 5 tips on using your phone for a Teams meeting. I'll be using an iPhone today, but most of the features should apply to an Android phone as well. Before we get started, you'll of course need to install Teams on your phone. Go to the App Store, search for Teams, and install. I already have mine installed. The first time you open the app, it'll ask you to sign into your Teams account and give permission to allow access for things like microphone and camera use. Okay, once you have the app installed on your phone, let's join a Teams meeting. Open up the app, navigate to the calendar, and select the appropriate meeting, and press join. On the top left, you'll see an icon to blur your background. Pressing on this icon will turn on your video and activate the blur. You can select the icon again to toggle it off. On the bottom, you have the option to change your settings for your video, mic, and your audio. After you've selected the appropriate settings, hit join now. Even after you've joined the meeting, you'll still have the option to turn off and on your video, your mic, and change the setting for your audio. And here's the button to end the call. The first tip I want to share with you is to put your phone in landscape position if you're sharing your video. Your video might seem fine to you, but for other people, it'll look tightly cropped, almost like a close-up. Having the phone in landscape position will give wider angle that's more pleasing. Tip number two is to turn on the live captions. If you're in a noisy environment where you can't hear the meeting audio well, you can turn on live captions. In my experience, the captions work pretty well as long as only one person is talking at a time. Testing the live caption option to see if it works well. Tip number three, share screen. You can share your photo, your video, or your screen. You can take a new photo or you can choose a photo from your gallery and hit start presenting. Or you could choose to share your video and present your live video feed. For sharing screen, I'm gonna demonstrate using my iPad Pro instead of iPhone. Once you select share screen, you can press start broadcast. It'll count down from three to let you know when it started broadcasting. From this point, anything you do with your iPad will be broadcasted in Teams. Here, I'm opening up my Notability app and we'll start illustrating on a new page with an Apple Pencil. Tip number four is to blur your background. If you have a lot of clutter behind you, blur your background for less distraction. Tip number five, turn off incoming video. If you don't have high internet bandwidth and want to reduce the bandwidth requirement, you can turn off incoming video. If you start to experience some lags and glitches, turning off incoming video may help. Here's a bonus tip. You can transfer a meeting from one device to another or join from multiple devices. Start a meeting on one device, like from your laptop, then open up Teams on your iPhone. You'll see a banner on top indicating that there is already a meeting in progress. Select Join. You'll be given the option to either add this device while still keeping the meeting live on your laptop or transfer the meeting to the phone and end it on your laptop. I often join meetings from two devices, especially when I'm presenting. This way, I can use both the webcam from my laptop 
and the camera from my phone for a second angle. You can't show both videos at the same time, but you can toggle back and forth by switching the video on on one device and turning it off on the other. Alright, hope this video was helpful. If you're interested in learning more about Teams, check out my other video on screen sharing in a Teams meeting. Thanks for watching and bye for now.